So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joy Woodson, and I am a Galileo staff person in charge of marketing. And I'm so glad that we were able to uh, have Ben Mullis with us today. Um, he submitted a proposal way back when, um, when we were asking for uh, submissions. And so we're glad to have him here today. He's the director of library services at Oconee Fall Line Technical College. And he will be discussing expanding virtual library services. So some things that they did in this past year during the pandemic to assist to assist students and probably faculty uh, faculty as well. And uh, just a reminder, you can go ahead and put your questions in the chat for Ben during the presentation. And we will answer some of them during the presentation. And then we may answer the rest of them towards the end. And if you want to speak aloud, you can use the raise your hand feature. And we have two great moderators on today to help us with that. So Ben, again, thank you for presenting. I'll let you take it away. Okay, awesome. Well, I am very pleased to be here with everybody. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk about what OFTC did and um, just some of the ideas that I had and some ideas that I stole from our other wonderful TCSG library directors. And I'd love to hear what some of y'all have done uh, because I also want to learn and steal some things from y'all. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. I've got an introduction slide. Where I'm gonna to try to answer the five interrogative questions. Uh, some of these might be a little bit of a stretch, so just bear with me. So the first one, who am I? Uh, I'm Ben Mullis. I am the Director of Library Services for OFTC, Oconee Fall Line Technical College. Uh, I've been here for two years. And before that, I served as a reference and instruction librarian at Middle Georgia State University. And I took a lot of good ideas from them as well. Um, so hopefully they will be represented uh, as well. And so what are we doing? Uh, we're gonna look at how OFTC navigated, you know, these unique challenges brought about by the move to online education and online services. Um, we're going to talk about the major library services and how we kind of transition those online, as well as uh, some new things that we did in light of, you know, the pandemic and working from home and engaging with our patrons. Um, and so, and I'm also open to learn what y'all have done. Um, so when did this start? Uh, really, I started back in June of 2019. And I was trying to really just update all of our resources uh, because I noticed when I first got here that we weren't really doing any online stuff as far as the library was going. Um, so I really wanted to begin that process then. But, you know, that was vague. And we did a little bit here and there. And then about February of last year, uh, Allison Rapinski at Central Georgia came out with a business continuity plan and basically what are we going to do when we go home because we knew that we were going home at some point um, and so that really prompted some action. I basically copied hers, uh, changed some wording around to be OFTC focused and centric, uh, submitted that to our provost to say all right here's our plans for when we you know, should we need to shut down? Uh, and then, of course, March the 12th of 2020, we got the call that said, all right, we're shutting it down. We're closing the doors. You know, we're going to figure this out together. Um, and so we really started some of these ideas that we're going to talk about then. And it's really just kind of been an ongoing process of, all right, well, this worked great. We're going to keep doing this. Or oh, that didn't work so well. Maybe we won't do that. Um, and so then that kind of leads us into, well, where are we going? And this is a little philosophical in, you know, where are we as librarians going and as libraries, how are we going to go forward 
serving our patrons. Um, and I think, you know, online services are here. They're just, they're here uh, to stay. And likely they're gonna be more prevalent as we go forward. Um, and so we have always kind of led the way in serving our patrons in meeting them where they are. Uh, and so I think we do a really good job of that. So I think we're gonna be continuing to look into the future and seeing how we can meet patrons where they are and where they are is online. Um, and so that also kind of goes hand in hand with the next question of well, why is this important at all? Um, the internet has just become an integral part of who we are and our mission as educators and service providers. Um, so we, we will need to serve our patrons and um, we need to serve them in the environments that they find themselves. And right now, like I said, that's online. So let's go ahead and get started after that very long-winded uh, introduction. So of course, one of the major things that we do is information literacy. And so we developed online synchronous and asynchronous info lit sessions. Uh, a lot of our faculty wanted that synchronous environment. And so we said, okay, we can do that. Uh, we had to learn Blackboard Collaborate uh, because that's our learning management system is the Blackboard. And so I spent a good week, you know, at home trying to figure out, well, how does that work? What does that look like? Um, and so we did several of these online uh, sessions where we all logged in at the same time, kind of like this. Um, and so students asked questions and we, we did, you know, what we do, what we do best. We teach students how to use information and how to evaluate that information. And so we also did asynchronous. Uh, I really updated our PowerPoint presentation and uh, created these demonstration videos so that I could give the faculty something that they could embed into their courses to say, all right, we're not doing a, a live thing. Just look at this when you get a chance. And we did some assessments. We did a pre-test and a post-test for some of our courses, just like we do in person. Um, but we made it as available as possible for our faculty to, to show their students. And that's, that's really the name of the game with online services is what can we do to make things available for our patrons? Um, and so that kind of leads into this. I created this demonstration video using Blackboard Collaborate and Windows Movie Maker. I have embedded it here on the right, but I will not subject y'all to 20 minutes of gushing about the library and what we can do for our students. You can watch that if you want, um, it's there. Um, I, I realized though that I'm not much of a movie maker. Uh, my editing skills have left something to be desired. So I'm trying to work on that. Um, we, we have included the tutoring center into library services now. And so I created this great demonstration video. I had it edited real nice and I sent it to our provost and she said, Ben, did you forget you have tutoring services now? So I said, I did. Uh, so I, I made a tutoring video and just kind of jammed those together. And so if you watch the video, you will see a distinct uh, cut between one video and the other. Um, so definitely, uh, look at some tutorials on how to how to do these things uh, so that you don't make those same mistakes. Um, but it's a really great tool, I think, for our students. And we're going to keep making more about different library things so that our students will have these uh, videos that they can watch on their own time or the professors can assign them as homework. Um, and then we updated our presentation so that it would be more about the online resources that they will, would have access to off campus as well as on campus. Um, and I think that's really helped as well. Just again, making these things available and showing them how to access these things where they are. Um, 
and we revised the faculty library orientation to be asynchronous as well. So once a year, we have all the faculty come into the library and we would get to do this thing um, where we talk about the library to faculty, we get to show them all the cool things we've done and all the cool things we've done over the next year or the past year. And uh, we just get to hang out and they'd come in the library and it was great. But of course, we couldn't do that because you know we were all working from home. So we still wanted to do this for the faculty, but we knew we had to do something different. So I basically made an, another PowerPoint with that went into a lot more depth because I wasn't there to provide that context. Um, and so, um, yeah, so we've really tried to make these things available. And, and if you if y'all would like these, I can give you uh, my PowerPoint presentations and we make that happen. Um, so are there any questions so far? You did have one uh, sort of a question question comment asking yeah. if you had tried VSDC video recorder and Flash Integro editor that they let you split the movie into tracks and edit section, sections together. I have not, but that is going on my list of resources. Uh, so thank you very much, Eileen. That is great. Uh, definitely being from that. We also have a, just a comment asking uh, when you get a chance to send your YouTube URL, uh, maybe through the chat if you have yeah. it available. Uh, I can do that. Uh, if I, I will figure that out. <laughs> and if I can't do that, I will get it in the chat before we can. Um, yeah. Right, well, we will move on to the next most important uh, or largest section of things that we do. And that is reference and outreach. Um, so, you know, a lot of questions we would get would be um, in person. We get a lot of walk-in questions. Um, so this Ask a Librarian form just became invaluable for us. Uh, I've included a screenshot of what that looks like over on the right. Uh, you know, students fill out all that information and then they give us um, as much information as possible. And then of course, you know, we can we can see that it comes to my email and my staff's emails and whoever um, you know is Johnny on the spot can say, hey, I got this one. Uh, and then the rest of us know that someone has answered that. Um, and that's been really great. Uh, that was one of the tools that I stole from Middle Georgia State. Uh, they implemented that years ago and it's incredible. Um, and it's just a basic form. I worked with our web minister to get that up and running uh, and then much like the rest of y'all, email marketing became huge. Um, we bombarded students with emails uh, when we were closed and you know, we were doing things online. We had weekly resource highlights, programming announcements, tutoring advertisements, and just general library updates. Uh, we got some pretty decent response from that. So I've continued with our email marketing in conjunction with you know, flyers and our more traditional marketing efforts, um, because for some reason, students are looking at their emails. That has surprised me. But I guess when that's the only line of communication you have, you start looking at it. Um, and so then we started utilizing that Blackboard Collaborate and WebEx to meet with our students. Uh, we'll see one of these cool things uh, that we did is we had virtual office hours using Blackboard Collaborate. And that was really great um, because I'm too much of a people person not to hear people's voices uh, and to not you know, talk to people. So when we were sitting at the house, not talking to students and patrons and other staff, that drove me crazy. Uh, I think I called people more than ever before because I just, I had to talk to people. Um, and so, kind of simulating that in-person environment was crucial to me. And I think a lot of our students enjoyed that uh, versus just, you know, emailing back and forth. Uh, we did a lot of that as well, but uh, having those time slots to meet with students, I think really, really helped. Um, and so that was kind of our reference and our outreach. 
And then something that we really stepped up was our embedded librarianship program. Um, now I know that this has been a buzzword in library services for years, uh, especially in academic librarianship. Uh, and we started this a few semesters ago, but it really ramped up during the uh, online education time. So we started with our orientation course, the College 1060, we call it Introduction to College and Computers. Uh, so I'm enrolled in every single section so that I can check in on things. Uh, each of the instructors gave me a discussion board where I can post uh, updates and you know, questions and those videos and things like that. And students can email me through Blackboard or I included my office phone number, which was routed to my cell phone during the work from home and my email, whatever we had to do so that students could contact us, we were doing. Uh, and, and we noticed that that went really, really well. And so we got to expand that into our gen ed subjects, psychology, English, history, you know, the, the things everybody has to take. Um, the program specific courses, those are a little tougher to get involved with, but uh, we were able to get into one or two of those, but there was not much response from, from those instructors. Um, and then of course we integrated library tools into that Blackboard learning management system. Our distance ed person was great. She, uh, she would work with us to get uh, library links in there and uh, the Ask a Librarian form was on every single student's uh, Blackboard homepage. So that was great. Um, so we were able to really see, see an uptick because of that because students were logging into Blackboard uh, all the time with that. And so that was, that was really huge for us. Um, and uh, we're still seeing an uptick, I think, from that or because of that. Um, so this next one is gonna be a little bit more TCSG specific. I remember we did not have this at Middle Georgia State, but we have what's called the Lending Library Program. And this is where we will actually loan out textbooks to our students for the semester. Uh, they apply uh, before the semester begins and we, we process all these applications and get the books ready for them. Um, so what we had to do to make that you know, viable in the online environment was we had to create an online application. And that has been huge. This is definitely one of those things that we are still doing in conjunction with the in-person applications. Uh, again, it routes to my email. And so every morning I come into about five or six of these, print them out, we'll get them processed and ready to go for them to pick up the Thursday before uh, courses start. And it has been an invaluable tool so that students don't have to come in uh, because you know we were saying, don't come in, stay home. Do not gather in more than one or two people at a time. Uh, and so in the summer, when we really, when we first started this, we actually mailed out these books to the students. Um, and that did not go well at all. Um, we saw the most overdue items and just lost items from that uh, summer because a lot of these students either changed addresses or didn't know what their actual address was. But yeah, we have seen a lot of lost items from when we had to mail them out. So if you're thinking about mailing things to students, just make sure that the students know their address and all of that. Um, yeah, we mailed books out and it was an issue. Um, I saw that in the chat. I, and we actually did get a lot of buy-in from our faculty for the embedded librarian program. Um, like I said, it was mainly the gen ed faculty, but they were, they were all about it. Um, once they saw what we did for the College 1060 courses, uh, we had to prove ourselves in those College 1060 courses 
But once we did, I think word kind of spread and um, it really led to us having a lot of um, embedded librarianship. I'm, most of my day is now taken up with answering student questions from Blackboard. Um, so we did a first come first serve basis. We used to do financial aid uh, qualifications for the textbook lending program, but then that just became too much work for us and as well as our financial aid department. Uh, and because we are such a small school, I think our enrollment's at about 18 or 1900. Uh, it just made sense to just say, all right, we have 10 ALHS, 1090 books. So the first 10 students to apply for that one gets it. And then if they don't come pick it up, we'll contact the 11th person to request that book and say, hey, we have one. Uh, it's pretty great. Um, I, it's actually one of the things that I really, really love about the TCS student. Uh, we are really trying to take care of our students. Uh, a lot of our students are uh, needing that kind of financial aid um, to, to just come to school. Um, I know I've talked with a lot of our students and they said, yeah, if I didn't have this program, I wouldn't be able to go to school. So it's been a really great program. Um, I just wish we had handled um, the distribution during the pandemic a little bit better, but that's okay. It's over uh, or it's becoming over. And we, we've kind of gone back to our normal distribution method of just come pick it up on that Thursday before classes. And really throughout the semester, I've got four or five books that are waiting for students to come pick up right now. Um, so Amory, these books were purchased uh, from the bookstore. Uh, I have a budget of about two to four thousand dollars each year, and I, I work with the bookstore to buy those and um, and I create an inventory. Um, and inevitably, the faculty will update their textbooks, and then I'll have to spend more money <laughs> to buy more textbooks. But that's okay. Yes, we barcode the books uh, and we loan them out to their library account. Uh, we have set up a separate library within Alma though. So we have our regular desk and then our lending library desk as well. Uh, so it's a different uh, portion of uh, Alma, but it's still on their one you know, Alma account. So pretty neat. I'm a big fan, uh, as you can tell. Um, so let's see. And then programming. I love programming. And this, we basically just took things we were doing and just moved them online. Uh, we had an online book club uh, where we did, um, we had weekly discussion board questions and uh, we met synchronously at the very end. It was for one month. We had a different Galileo article for each week on a different topic. Uh, we did it in, I want to say January of this year, and it was student loan, debt forgiveness, uh, race and equality, climate change, and minimum wage. Uh, you know, some pretty hot topics. Um, and so we would have a discussion board questions, and, you know, everybody would read everybody's. We, we had a little bit of buy-in with that one. Uh, <laughs> about five or six students. But, you know, for a first try, I thought that was pretty good. Um, that's about what we would have for our physical book clubs as well. Um, and um, we, you know, we hosted these virtual office hours. Every Thursday, I would log into this Blackboard Collaborate from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And I would email out to all the students at about one o'clock and say, hey, don't forget, Library office hours, get help with projects or tutoring, whatever you need, we will get you the help that you need. Uh, we saw a little bit of uh, success with that, but not as much as I was hoping for. Of course, 
Um, that's always going to be the case. And then, like I said, we took over the tutoring services or we merged uh, services together. And uh, I trained our staff in conjunction with our distance ed folks on that Blackboard Collaborate. So we were able to offer online tutoring services because we have students from all over the place, uh, especially with these online classes. Uh, and so that has really helped. Um, so, so unfortunately, we do not get to add the textbooks to the regular collection. Uh, we, we are funded by our foundation. And so the foundation uh, uses those textbooks um, to, they, they try to sell those textbooks to other colleges maybe, or to whomever, so that they can kind of recoup some of those funds. Um, so uh, helping more than one student at a time. That, so that was an issue in the beginning because we did have three or four at a time. So what I ended up doing was kind of like with Zoom meetings, uh, I would uh, just create a waiting room and then I would have one student for 30 minutes and then uh, said, you know, hey, you've got 30 minutes. And then at the 30 minute mark, uh, they would log off and then I would work with the next student. Uh, didn't happen often, but really in the beginning, because uh, I guess it was a novel thing, we had several students at a time come in. And sometimes they wanted to work as a group. Um, and so we were able to help two or three at a time, you know, with whatever project they were, they were doing together. Um, so that was helpful. And then I think my favorite thing that we did was this virtual Easter egg hunt. Um, essentially what we did was we sent out an email to all the students and all of the faculty and staff with a barcode or a call number. And the first student or faculty to tell us what the title of that barcode was got uh, a piece of candy. They could come in to the library once we opened back up and uh, they could get a piece of candy. Uh, it was a simple little thing. Um, this year, we did it both virtually and physically. We had little eggs, break it open, it has a barcode in it. You go find it on the shelf, get a piece of candy. It was neat and uh, they, they loved it. Um, we had the most buy-in for our programming with that one because they knew candy was at stake. Yeah. Uh, Joy, I totally understand that. Uh, students were definitely just trying to, just trying to keep their heads above water. Uh, and so yeah, trying to get a hold of them definitely was hard sometimes, but you know, we helped as many students as we could. And honestly, that's that's where we're still going. Whatever we can do, whatever we need to do to adapt, we're gonna do that. Um, let's see. And so we got a new book drop has nothing to do with online services, but it came about because we closed and our only book drop was inside uh, of the building that the library is located in. And so I begged and cajoled, I, I maybe even bribed our provost to get us a book drop um, for those returns, those lending library returns when we were closed, uh, regular library returns, it was a godsend. Uh, we, we would not have survived without that. Um, so that is just a fun uh, kind of end to the presentation. Um, so now I guess we will open it up to uh, questions. Oh yeah. Deborah, absolutely. Outside book drops are the way to go. Hi, everyone. If you do have additional questions, thank y'all for participating throughout Ben's uh, presentation. It really helps to keep things rolling. Um, and if you all have some additional questions or even insights on what you all did at your libraries, I know Ben would love to hear, to hear that as well. Um, so you can Type yeah, into the chat or raise your hand to speak.
we have a question. Um, uh, actually, this may be a repeated question from earlier. How do you get buy-in from your faculty for embedded librarians? Uh, I know, like I said, we had to earn that, I guess, a little bit. Um, our College 1060 folks, it is part of our um, institutional effectiveness plan to have uh, a pretest and a post test for library things. So the buy in was kind of forced on them uh, by the provost and you know academic affairs as an as an academic unit. Um, so they were kind of forced to. Uh, and so I very much took advantage of that uh, and really got in there and answered student questions. I responded to faculty inquiries if they had any. Um, and then I think I saw uh, those faculty uh, spread the word as they met with their colleagues and in other disciplines. Um, and so that really helped us get into, um, into those other courses. And then really just hammering home, you know, the library's here for you, the library's here for your students, uh, serving on committees, what can we do for you? What can we do for the college? Just really getting our name out there whenever we can, or at least that's how we do. Gotcha. Ben, this is Deborah. How long have y'all been doing the embedded librarian? That's the first part of my question. The second part is if, um, if faculty or staff had any reservations about that, what were they? Gotcha. Um, we've been doing it uh, that's been part of IE since uh, Wendy was here before I was. Uh, I want to say 17, maybe 18. Uh, I think maybe it coincided with the Alma rollover. Um, but, you know, I know I've been doing it since I've been here. Uh, I think our faculty, our biggest reservation was what, what does this mean for me? in in so far as what do I have to do to make this happen? Uh, you know, are you going to take time from my teaching? W what does it actually look like? And so, you know, we were able to, to show them in the College 1060 courses that, you know, I can go in, if you make me an instructor or the distance ed folks make me an instructor. I can go in and make a discussion board that is, you know, library center, I think is what I called it. Um, and so they were, you know, so it was nothing on them. I was able to allay some of those fears. So hopefully that answers the question. Great. Another question. Um, oh, you know what? I think you got that one. Never mind. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, we did. We got a lot of students that wanted us to read over their papers. Um, and, you know, we were in somewhat of a unique position, especially lately, because we are now the tutoring center as well. Um, now, I will be the first to tell you I'm not an English major. But um, I was able to read over their papers, especially with the citations. Um, totally understand that. Um, and so, yeah, we just kind of expanded our services to look over paper for grammar and you know, flow and all of that stuff. Um, but again, that might not be the same at just a, you know, an academic library. We're an academic library slash tutor or academic support services. Uh, yeah. yeah. So hopefully that helps. And I see Megan's comment. She said, interesting, we are separate from our tutor center. Right. 
So I try to refer them to the center as much as possible. Yeah, 100%. That makes sense. That is what they're there for. All right, well, not seeing any additional questions come in. Um, you all have been great um, during Ben's presentation. And um, I also thought that Ben, you were very like refreshing, you know, just giving a real honest perspective of the, the challenges and the successes that you had um, as you all pivoted during the pandemic. And so we appreciate you bringing uh, this presentation to us today. Yeah, um, well, thank you. That, that means a lot, Joy. No problem, no problem. And um, as we mentioned at the beginning of the session, Ben's session has been recorded and uh, that will be available later, but his slides will be available as soon as possible on sketch and then you all can refer to those then and I imagine Ben if they had any additional questions for you um they could reach out to you at your library right yes absolutely it's uh oftc.edu slash library okay uh, um and I will include my contact info on the sketch if I can uh I'll send that to you Joy and okay I'll try to find our link for our oh, yeah. demo video too the YouTube, I was actually over here trying to find it while you were talking and I, I couldn't find it to put it into the chat, but- um, That's fair. I think it's hidden. Uh, oh, I think it's okay. just <laughs> for uh, OFTC folks, but I okay. will try to find that link uh, that I used to embed it. Okay. And, um, Maybe yeah, add that out. to your slides and then they'll be able to see it in there. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. very true. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us and uh, we'll see you all bright and early tomorrow morning for day two. Yeah. Thank you all so much for coming. Right. The world. Bye. Great job, dude. Thanks.